the topic of today is again health parameters uh, in uh, broilers with insight into intestinal microbiome and uh, some practical uh, solutions. During the uh, session, we will cover um, a few points, introductions, so this is what we are uh, currently doing. Uh, then we will move into existing uh, knowledge about microbiome, uh, then into presence of pathogens, uh, their functionality and associated risks. Uh, then we will look into the toolkits uh, to support intestinal health and of course we will uh, um, end up with the conclusions. So let's move on. Um, there are multiple factors that uh, influence uh, bird health, starting with, starting with breeders, uh, their management uh, practices uh, on farm and uh, also the feeding program and the nutrition program that they, uh, they receive. Uh, then, of course, chick quality that is uh, affected uh, by uh, uh, breeders, by, by, by the well-being uh, and, uh, and the uh, conditions of, uh, of, of, of the parent stock, of course. And uh, uh, quite a lot of influence here also has uh, incubation, incubation conditions. Uh, then, of course, broiler nutrition plays a very big role, and uh, if, if we take from the Think from the perspective of uh, cost of production, uh, uh, this is probably the, 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 the most costly part, uh, uh, taking about 70% of, uh, of, of the production uh, cost. And uh, uh, together with the uh, broiler nutrition, farm conditions also play quite a significant role. And sometimes, uh, depending on, on the situation, they can be even more influential than, uh, uh, than nutrition. And of course, uh, last but not the least, what is very important is uh, to have a good vaccination program that uh, takes care of prevention of uh, common uh, diseases. Intestinal health has a direct influence uh, uh, on uh, the overall health and productivity of the animals. And uh, one of the key focus uh, points that gut health is uh, microflora. And uh, when we discuss the topic of microflora, the main points uh, of attention are uh, optimal balance and uh, low numbers of uh, pathogenic microbial um, uh, strains. So with this, we will quickly move uh, into the overview of uh, existing uh, knowledge about uh, uh, microbiome. And uh, this is a quite a uh, busy slide, so please, please uh, uh, stay with me. I will take you uh, through it. This diagram um, represents an attempt to uh, capture all known factors that uh, influence microbiota composition uh, of, uh, of the intestine. And the microbial uh, community of the digestive tract is a very complex world and we can kind of see it on, the, uh, on, on this diagram. So there are several or multiple uh, um, uh, factors that, that uh, play a role here. Uh, farm management with uh, several factors that affect uh, stress and welfare and uh, health uh, interventions should they be uh, needed uh, to, to apply nutrition and uh, uh, so the, the composition of the feed itself uh, as well as how, uh, how it's managed. Litter management system and uh, so if we take an example of uh, feed, when feed is ingested and uh, the, the remaining part of, of the undigested feed of course uh, 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 comes out with, with the excreta and it uh, uh, ends up in, in, in the litter. So if, if, if there are uh, quite a lot of undigested uh, material that is still present, it uh, um, uh, provides a substrate for the uh, microflora uh, to, uh, to develop, uh, then the bird being in, uh, in the barn and in, in the close contact uh, with, with the litter, of course, it, it, it ingests uh, also part of, uh, of, of that bedding uh, material. And if there are some uh, digestive disturbances, then uh, uh, gut uh, health uh, comes in, into, into question. And if, if uh, intestinal health is not controlled, then we have the cycle of uh, some of the unwanted uh, microflora or the, some, some of, of, of that flora ending up again in, in the litter and in, in the gut microbiota. Um, there are also host-related uh, factors. So some, some factors are, are uh, those that you can Managed directly or indirectly. In case of uh, host related uh, factors, those can be bird type. So the microflora of uh, broilers, for example, is different to the microflora of uh, turkeys because it's a, it's a different uh, animal. 
then uh, uh, the, the gut uh, maturation and, uh, and development stage of the intestinal uh, tract also plays a role. So in, in the uh, young chick, the microbial population is uh, different to the older birds. And last but not the least, we also have environmental factors. And uh, we might think that uh, um, the poultry house is uh, uh, environmentally controlled, so there should be a rather limited effect. However, we will uh, uh, look at some, uh, uh, some examples where we will see also some uh, seasonal influences. Um, a common approach uh, seen in, in, uh, in the industry is to establish what bacteria are present in the intestine and then uh, find the correlations between those bacteria and the productive performance. So we really then look at who is present and we are, we are trying to, to establish those links. Do we think this approach provides uh, all the answers or in other words, uh, should we only focus on who is present or should we look at uh, something else? So uh, with this uh, question in mind, uh, let's ex explore some uh, examples. Once uh, the chick has hatched, uh, so came out of, of, of the egg and uh, came into contact uh, with the microflora in the environment, it takes about um, uh, one week for the microbiome population to develop to its full capacity and uh, to establish its uh, population. In the intestine of the day old chick, um, there are approximately hundreds of millions uh, to billions of uh, bacterial organisms present. And uh, after one week, this number increases to hundreds of billions. So the, the, the increase of, of, of the number of uh, organisms that are present uh, uh, is, is quite a gigantic uh, step. Once established, there are four major phyla uh, that populate uh, the environment of, of the cecum. And the uh, cecum is, is usually the most often uh, uh, sampled uh, um, part of, of the intestinal tract uh, because it, it covers uh, quite a wide diversity of uh, bacterial uh, species uh, that are present um, uh, in cecum. So once established, we have uh, four main phylums, and those are firmicutes, they're highlighted in red. And then we have uh, uh, bacterioides um, and uh, proteobacteria. So the, the proteobacteria highlighted in, in uh, green, the blue uh, uh, bacterioidetes. Um, and uh, there are some also cyanobacteria. So if, if you look at the uh, proportional, um, uh, uh, sorry, not cyan, actinobacteria. If you look at the uh, proportional uh, split, uh, firmicutes take uh, the largest uh, space uh, in, uh, uh, in the segment of, uh, of uh, cecum. And uh, they are primarily, uh, as firmicutes group, uh, they are primarily responsible for the hydrolysis of the polysaccharides and the oligosaccharides into primary sugars. And then uh, um, the products of the fermentation, such as short chain fatty acids, um, they uh, act as, as a substrate uh, of, uh, or as, as, as an energy source for the intestinal cells and also some, uh, sometimes for uh, bacteria. And uh, those uh, short chain fatty acids are typically acetate, uh, propionate, uh, propionate, and uh, butyrate. So then uh, the, the, this volatile uh, short chain fatty acids uh, are employed as an energy uh, and uh, carbon source. They uh, regulate. Uh, uh, blood flow, stimulate growth of enterocytes, and uh, uh, also regulate production of mucins. Um, in response, uh, chicken also provides a substrate uh, uh, for, for bacteria to grow on. So bacteria provide some, uh, some, pos uh, some positive metabolites, and uh, also uh, the, the organism of, of a chicken provides a substrate. So it's a very reprisocal uh, 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 type of, uh, of the relationship between the host and between the uh, bacteria. One of the factors uh, that has a big influence on the microbial composition um, is the season, which I mentioned uh, earlier. And here we can look at the measured effect of uh, uh, microbial, uh, microbial diversity. In the autumn, and uh, this uh, study was done in, in the US, so it's a uh, it's determined as a fall. 
there was a lowest uh, variation of uh, bacterial uh, genera present and uh, there were also clear differences uh, between uh, winter uh, and the summer month so if you look also at the spread of, uh, of, of different types uh, then the, the diversity seems to be uh, actually quite different in winter compared uh, to, uh, to some and, and the um, yeah, average diversity uh, uh, changes. So then if we, if we take uh, autumn as an uh, example in the fall, Lachnus purata significantly is, uh, had significantly lower abundance uh, in, uh, in the autumn. And the main genera that were affected uh, were from Clostridium fourth and uh, 14A uh, group also Coprococcus, Doria, and uh, Ruminococcus. If we talk about uh, Clostridia, uh, Clostridium 4 and, and uh, 14 groups, those are uh, beneficial strains. Uh, they are associated with the beauty rate production and uh, reduced in inflammation. Uh, they uh, help with reduction of uh, gut permeability and uh, they uh, help to improve the gut health uh, generally. So as I already mentioned, they, they are quite positive. Uh, uh, bacterial species. Uh, Ruminococcus group is uh, closely related to Clostridium for uh, group and uh, it has been shown to have several positive uh, phenotypes including those that degrade uh, resistant starches and uh, negative correlations with um, uh, sh uh, showed negative correlation with the uh, irritable uh, bowel syndrome in, uh, in humans. So in this case, in fall, those two types were actually uh, uh, lower in, in their uh, abundance compared to the other seasons. So that's, that's to, to have an idea about possible effects uh, during different times uh, uh, of the year. Moving further uh, into another study, um, here we looked at the, or the, the researchers looked at the effect of um, uh, bird maturation and the uh, um, differences in the microflora at a different uh, age. So as the bird grows older, we are looking here at the example uh, of uh, 7, 21 and four, uh, 42 days. Um, with the age, the bacterial population uh, changes. We have already established uh, that phylum firmicutes uh, take the majority of uh, seeds. Uh, now the representation of uh, different genera uh, within the film changes with, uh, with, with time. Uh, so within the, the uh, Firmicutes film, Clostridium um, remains a predominant uh, order, whilst the genera within the uh, order uh, changes uh, with time. So if you look at uh, seven days, we see the population which is uh, uh, represented so the, these are the, the dominant uh, uh, types. Uh, Lachnus pirazza, uh, pseudo-flavonifactor and flavonifactor. Then with age, we see the uh, shifting trend uh, to uh, fecalibacterium. And then when the bird uh, becomes even older, we see a higher diversity in, the, in, in um, genera that are present uh, at the older age. Uh, so here we see Ocelibacter, again, Lachnus pirazza, Rosaburia, and uh, fecalibacterium. In the box uh, diagram on the right hand side, uh, we see the microbiome of uh, four birds. So on the bottom axis, we see uh, birds C and T V, and uh, uh, they were sampled at 14 and uh, 35 days. And uh, here, um, the representation of uh, dif different uh, um, genera was uh, looked at. So if you take the example of uh, Lachnus pirazza at uh, 14 days and 35 days, there is quite a, a pronounced uh, downward uh, uh, reduction or trend uh, for, for this example. So we see that indeed with, with the age, uh, there is a shift in the amount of uh, uh, different bacteria that are present uh, in the intestinal tract. In the same study, um, there was a, uh, intrig quite an intriguing uh, finding. Um, so although we see pronounced uh, changes in the amount of uh, bacteria that are present, uh, the functionality of the genes seems to remain constant. So if you remember the, the previous uh, slide with the downward shift of uh, Lachnus pirazza, now if you look at, at some specific um, 
um, functionality. So the, the genes, uh, uh, gene expression by, uh, by specific uh, uh, functions. That expression uh, seems to be quite constant uh, between 14 and uh, 35 days. So as a thought, perhaps uh, different bacteria adapt um, their functionalities based on the requirements of the host. And uh, whilst maybe you have some questions already popping up in your head, uh, let's have a look at a uh, um, couple of more examples. So this is a different study, and uh, the objective here was to evaluate the effect of uh, coccidiostat, monensin, in combination with the low dose of uh, antibiotics. So the monensin was used, um, and then the treatment was applied on seven days. The checks were done seven days uh, post uh, treatment. So there was monensin. Monensin in combination with low dose of Virginia mycin and uh, with the low dose of uh, thylo uh, mycin. Uh, on the uh, left uh, side, we see the proportional representation by uh, bacterial groups, and, and this is a diminishing uh, um, order. And uh, if you look at the uh, proportion of uh, Rosaburia uh, that was uh, initially present there was a quite a strong reduction across uh, the whole three treatments. So it shows that monensin uh, had a quite a strong uh, um, effect. And uh, about Rosaburia, uh, this microorganism has been uh, negatively correlated uh, in the studies uh, uh, with the pigs. So there was a negative correlation uh, with the body weight. And also similar findings have been uh, uh, shown in, in humans. So re a reduction of uh, rosaburia, therefore, could serve as an indicator of uh, growth promoting effect. Or in other words, if you see the reduction, then it could be actually a posit positive uh, sign. In addition to rosaburia, uh, lactobacillus uh, was uh, uh, reduced. So we see the red line uh, um, against lactobacillus, uh, as well as uh, coprococcus. And uh, in the groups with uh, antibiotics, the level of uh, E. coli uh, was, uh, I'm trying to, uh, to, to find the line of uh, E. coli. Um, so in, in the groups with the uh, Virginia mycin and tylosine, we see an increase uh, of, uh, of, of the E. coli level. However, this was not surprising actually, uh, since uh, uh, the two antibiotic types that were used in this study did not cover in the spectrum for Escherichia. So it seems like, of course, quite logical that uh, when there is a reduction in, in one particular bacteria type, uh, there is a room for the other opportunistic bacteria to take place. And in this case, E. coli uh, took, took that place. But before, before we jump into conclusions about the effect of uh, medication, let's have a look at one more slide. And uh, this is uh, about the same study. So the same study, um, but the, the effect or the results are viewed at slightly different perspective. So uh, instead of looking at the individual bacteria, uh, we are now looking at the, um, uh, at, at the uh, larger level, right? Um, so when we look at, at the bar chart, uh, we indeed uh, do see the shift in the blue bars, uh, which are represented by Clostridia class. And if you look at the horizontal uh, uh, axis, so this, this was the beginning of the study, uh, control, um, monensin, and then combination with Virginia mycin and tylosin, then uh, uh, at uh, 14 days and uh, 35 uh, days. There were indeed changes, uh, if especially if, if you look at the Clostridia population, so the antibiotics, uh, seem to have a reduction uh, after seven days uh, of uh, um, after the treatment. But if you look further, uh, as, as the bird, birds get uh, older, we see that actually that population of Clostridium uh, reestablishes itself and uh, the level is uh, actually increasing compared uh, to the control. And uh, this led to the conclusion, one of the conclusions of the study, um, that the bird age uh, has a larger effect uh, in this case than, than the treatment. And uh, similar to the previous slides, uh, one of the questions might uh, come up. So is the, 
is the composition of the microflora really what determines uh, the effect on performance or perhaps uh, there is something else that we should look at. So we have looked at uh, seasonal effects. Uh, we have looked at the maturation uh, and age and also um, uh, at the effect of medication. On the current slide, uh, I included the summary of uh, findings from several studies about the bacteria characteristic, uh, bacteria type characteristic for high or low performance. So we have uh, the table that uh, describes the body weight and the uh, heat conversion. And uh, each line represents a separate study that looked uh, for the differences in uh, dominant bacterial uh, groups. So we have um, high performance, uh, low performing birds for body weight and uh, similar setup is for the feed conversion. On the example um, of the Sika, so we are looking also at the, at the different uh, sections in the intestinal tract. Um, so again, looking in, in, in this case, in the Sika, uh, the high body weight birds, we can see that in, um, in one study, Lactobacillus uh, seems to be a characteristic or predominant uh, uh, in the population of the birds with, with high body weight, so high performing birds. And uh, in, uh, in the other study, and as I mentioned, each, each, each line represents a separate study. So in a different study, the finding was uh, um, uh, opposite. So the Lactobacillus was representative for the low performing birds. Uh, similarly, we can also look at the observations with feed conversion. Ruminococcus um, was found uh, characteristic for the high performance or for the low feed conversion in one study, and uh, in a different study, it, it seems to be characteristic for the low performing bird. So we do see uh, quite some inconsistencies. So in how 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 should we interpret this uh, kind of uh, results? So we should take care uh, when we look for uh, specific bacteria as a biomarker and uh, uh, it is quite important uh, to keep in mind that the uh, consistency of method and uh, sampling site and experimental design as well as uh, uh, interpretation of the functions of the bacteria are uh, important uh, for a well-informed uh, uh, decision because as, as we saw there are quite a few factors that can influence the composition of, uh, of the microflora uh, of the intestinal tract. And uh, sometimes when you see the results, maybe of uh, a specific study, um, sometimes it, it helps to put things in perspective and ask yourself uh, where the sample was taken, what method was used, uh, what season, and uh, where the birds were sampled, and uh, maybe uh, there were some medications used in, in the treatment or some specific treatment that might uh, have an effect on, uh, on the microflora. In a short summary, seasons have an effect on the microbial population. The composition of, uh, and diversity changes with age, um, and the age has a greater effect uh, than the medication treatment alone. High and low performing birds uh, have a distinct differences in microbial composition, although there are some uh, contradicting uh, findings amongst those studies. On the other hand, uh, some studies show that uh, irrespective of the shift in the composition, um, the functionality of the bacteria uh, that are present in the, in the intestine seem to remain constant. And uh, why are we seeing this? Perhaps uh, what microbes are doing, so their functions are more important than uh, uh, the, the bacteria type that are present. So in other words, maybe uh, what microbes are doing is more important uh, compared to who is present in the microbial population. So with this, I would like to move to the next point of, uh, uh, of our session, which covers the uh, presence of pathogens, their functionality, uh, sh short overview, and uh, associated uh, risks. In the highly populated uh, microbiome, we also find sometimes the undesirable bacteria, unfortunately. The names that become uh, across uh, most commonly are Clostridium perfringens, 
E. coli, Salmonella, and uh, Campylobacter. And uh, Campylobacter itself does not uh, cause uh, issues with the productivity of, of the animals, but we of course uh, know that it is one of the major risk uh, uh, factors for the food safety for, for humans. Therefore, it's uh, important for the, um, in, in the poultry production. In general, uh, protein-rich diets uh, containing relatively high concentrations of uh, poorly digestible proteins uh, lead to high concentrations of, of the remaining protein in the intestine and thus uh, acts um, as a substrate for the bacteria and uh, uh, more specifically for Clostridium perfringens. But we also see that uh, E. coli and Salmonella and uh, Campylobacter, they belong to a proteolytic uh, type of, uh, of proteobacteria. Other factors that can lead to the increased uh, growth of uh, undesirable uh, uh, bacteria uh, can be immune uh, suppress uh, suppressing diseases, uh, sudden uh, changes in the diet. So one of the things to keep an eye on is the consistency of the raw material composition and avoid uh, very sharp uh, changes from one material to another or introduction of, uh, of new ingredients uh, in the middle of the feeding program. Um, diets containing uh, rye or fish meal, uh, or we uh, hear quite often about the viscous uh, uh, diets or um, uh, rye or wheat, wheat containing uh, feeds, especially when uh, there is no enzyme intervention uh, used. And the uh, changes in the normal intestinal microflora uh, due to the antibi antibiotic uh, treatment or vaccination. So we have seen also some effect that uh, um, some of the medications can uh, cause the, the microflora. We will uh, look into more details uh, into two of, of the uh, four um, uh, organisms in the overview. We we'll start with the, uh, with the E. coli. So E. coli belongs to the proteobacteria, it's the gamma proteobacteria uh, and it belongs to the, uh, to the family of uh, Escherichia. It's uh, typically present at the low abundance uh, throughout the life uh, of the animal. Some strains can uh, cause uh, opportunistic secondary infections following other uh, respiratory infections such as Mycoplasma galicepticum or following uh, physiological changes, uh, as an example, peritonitis. Unlike in other species in poultry, avian pathogenic E. coli, uh, shortly APEC, does not have the set of virulence genes, so uh, it is unlikely that uh, this bacteria will be the primary cause of, uh, uh, of infections, and it, therefore it comes as a secondary uh, infection. Uh, some APEC uh, uh, isolates have similarities in the genes of the uh, extra intestinal E. coli that uh, causes uh, issues in humans and therefore uh, suggest that uh, some uh, uh, APEC uh, E. coli could be zoonotic. Um, however, uh, there are inconsistencies uh, in, in the study, so no clear relation has been demonstrated so far. And uh, Whilst um, uh, apex uh, zoonotic potential is uh, not very clear, several research um, uh, suggests that uh, intestinal microflora, including E. coli, may serve as a reservoir for antibiotic resistance and uh, share this resistance genes with the zoonotic pathogens uh, such as uh, Salmonella. And in that case, then of course, there is a very bigger risk uh, for the human health if uh, if the Salmonella that is uh, uh, pathogenic for, uh, for, for humans if it possess possesses the uh, resistance uh, genes that are shared, are shared by E. coli, as an example. Clostridium perfringens, so that's the uh, second uh, one in the overview, uh, is uh, present in the population of uh, commensal uh, bacteria, again at a very low level of uh, abundance, so very low quantities. Many uh, members of Clostridium family are beneficial strains, and this is what we have uh, discussed uh, in the previous um, uh, slides. And uh, um, those beneficial strains are associated with butyrate production, and uh, they, they help with the uh, control of inflammation and uh, um, help with, uh, with the improvement of uh, uh, tight junctions and therefore reduction of uh, uh, gut permeability and uh, improve the gut health generally. 
And uh, unfortunately, uh, some clostridial uh, population uh, uh, includes the species that are pathogenic for poultry. And uh, Clostridium perfringens is uh, one of the examples. Um, the other types uh, are uh, Clostridium septicum, Clostridium colinum, and we uh, know that uh, Clostridium perfringens co uh, causes necrotic enteritis in, in poultry. Isolates uh, pathogenic for poultry contain a novel uh, toxin type, so it's a very powerful toxin that is luckily not possessed by human pathotypes. Um, uh, that toxin uh, causes uh, uh, quite severe cell damage in the intestinal uh, tract. Uh, some of the uh, uh, Clostridium perfringens are also uh, uh, human pathogens. Um, and they are transmitted through food and uh, they have been traced to different uh, origins that also include uh, food products of uh, avian origin. So then we are talking about poultry and then broiler, uh, broiler meat that we buy in, uh, in the supermarkets. So since we have uh, some troublemakers, uh, those bacteria that we would like to avoid um, in the production, uh, we should also have some uh, tools that help us to, uh, to prevent uh, the problems or at least to mitigate, mitigate the negative effect that uh, sometimes is already happening. And uh, from, from that toolbox, we have, um, as poultry veterinarians and nutritionists, uh, uh, we have four main groups of uh, feed additives that support the gut health. And those are phytogenics, uh, pro and prebiotics, short chain fatty acids, medium chain fatty acids, and yeast derivatives. Um, phytogenics uh, have antimicrobial uh, properties. They support digestive uh, function and um, uh, also help with the immune responses and, and uh, stimulation or regulation. Um, some components have anti, uh, antioxidant uh, properties. Uh, pre and probiotics also help with immune stimulation. Uh, they act uh, as a, uh, uh, they, they use the competitive exclusion uh, mechanism also to uh, push out uh, some of the unwanted uh, bacteria. Uh, they attach to pathogens and uh, uh, they can be substrate, su substrate for the fermentation. So this is in case of the prebiotics. For the short chain and medium chain fatty acids, they often used as a uh, fat source or energy source in the feed. And at the same time, they can have quite strong uh, antimicrobial um, effect depending on the inclusion and also on the type uh, and the length of the, of the fatty uh, acids um, that are present in the mix. Yeast derivatives, um, they have the, the uh, properties of uh, inhibiting of the pathogens. They sometimes have uh, prebiotic effect and uh, some studies showed uh, uh, improvement with enterocyte uh, proliferation. So these are the four main groups. Uh, we will look into more details um, into the, some of the effect of the products from the phytogenic uh, uh, group or phyto phytomolecules uh, as we also call them. So the current study uh, was conducted to determine the minimum inhibition dose uh, for E. coli. The study was done in uh, Scotland at the uh, Poultry Microbiology Laboratory in uh, Edinburgh. Phytomolecule product that was tested at the different uh, um, concentration levels in the water solution. And it was compared to the efficacy of the uh, antibiotic uh, kefa, uh, kefa, uh, Kefotaxin, apology, this has been quite a long day. Um, the liquid uh, uh, phytomolecule uh, product uh, showed uh, bacteriostatic, so we see the bacteriostatic effect at the lower concentration and the bactericidal effect depending on the inclusion level and was effective against the E. coli strain, uh, including antibiotic uh, resistant ones. So the four um, uh, top strains that, that were tested, they were the ESBL resistant uh, strains. And uh, also one non-resistant was, uh, was tested. So even if, if you look in this study at the efficacy of, uh, of the anti antibiotic, 
so even to the non-resistant uh, strain, uh, that efficacy was uh, somewhat uh, limited. And of course, uh, the resistant types uh, uh, were not sensitive to uh, this antibiotic. Um, the product itself has a strong, uh, has been formulated to have a strong antimicrobial uh, properties and it has also some digestive and uh, antioxidant enhancing uh, uh, properties. In addition to the effect of the liquid product, uh, the powder product, which is included in the, uh, typically in the feed, um, demonstrated uh, the reduction effect uh, on E. coli as well as uh, coliforms and uh, total uh, viable uh, count, so the, the, the total count of bacteria in the sample of, uh, uh, of the drop liquid and also uh, in the uh, digesta from uh, cecum. So in, in the three uh, groups of the graphs, uh, we see the reduction of the total bacterial counts when uh, liquid phytogenic product was used and it was compared to the effect of uh, um, antibiotic and of course uh, to the control. So if we look uh, in comparison to the control, uh, of course uh, antibiotic had an effect in all three uh, um, tests. So for the total viable count, for the E. coli and for the coliforms and the pathogenic product in, in this uh, case of phytomolecule product had a even numerical advantage uh, compared to the antibiotic. And a similar effect was uh, observed in the uh, crop sample as well as uh, in, uh, in Sika. So this was concerning E. coli coliforms uh, on the previous two slide, slides. Current slide uh, describes the effect uh, under the challenged conditions and uh, the effect of uh, combination of the in-feed and liquid products. Um, this combination was used uh, to help to mitigate um, the, the impact of uh, necrotic enteritis uh, caused by Clostridium interfringens. Uh, so we had again control. We had the positive uh, uh, control uh, where the birds were inoculated with the culture of uh, Clostridium interfringens. Um, then those inoculated birds um, uh, were also given treatment of the powder product uh, or in feed uh, additive and the combination of the in feed and the liquid product. Um, as we see on the feed conversion result, uh, of course, there is a negative effect uh, of inoculation, so the feed conversion uh, uh, significantly increases compared to the control. And the in feed product helps to bring the or to, to reduce the feed conversion to the similar level to the control. Uh, the combination also had a similar effect. So the, the two treatments were, uh, were comparable. They, there were no uh, significant difference between these two treatments. And the whole study was, um, uh, was done as a proof of uh, concept. So this was done in the research conditions. So then when we look at the necrotic enteritis uh, lesion uh, scores, so of course the, there were no lesions in the control. There were pronounced uh, uh, increase, or the, the lesions were present in, in the positive control, and the application of activo uh, of phytogenic in feed product and uh, also combination of in feed and, and liquid uh, had a re reducing effect on uh, uh, necrotic enteritis um, uh, lesion scores. And the effect was again similar between the two groups. However, the main, uh, main effect is observed in the uh, mortality, which, is which was in this case associated with necrotic enteritis. So the, the feed uh, uh, product alone did not have a, a pronounced effect here, but the combination helped to reduce uh, this necrotic enteritis related mortality by half. And uh, this is where the, the, the most power of, um, of, of the combination of, of the two products um, uh, comes in the result. So this was uh, yeah, the overview of uh, some of the effect of the phytogenic uh, products on the E. coli, on the coliforms, and it was in vivo, uh, in vitro, in vivo, and again, uh, uh, in vivo study.
So after reviewing um, all the uh, points about uh, knowledge of some, some of the highlights about the uh, microflora and uh, its population, then the, the pathogens and the uh, risks that they bring. Also, we looked at, at the toolkits that, uh, that we have in uh, our hands uh, uh, to help to minimize the risks and, and the problems that are caused by those pathogens. Uh, we come to, uh, uh, to the conclusions. So we can say that even with the uh, quite a large uh, progress in the methodology of detection with the uh, sequencing, so uh, um, actually the, most of the analysis that, which was presented uh, in the first part of, uh, of this presentation was uh, done uh, with, the, with the DNA or RNA uh, sequencing. And this technique allows for the um, uh, way broader detection of the microorganisms uh, compared to the traditional culture methods. And uh, uh, even though there has been quite a big progress in, in the analysis, um, the knowledge of the microbiome and the uh, understanding um, uh, at this moment still uh, uh, remains uh, uh, not, not fully completed. The population of uh, microbial community is influenced by multiple uh, external and uh, internal factors. And uh, from the external factors, we have environment, season, feed, and uh, genetics, uh, and uh, internal factors being uh, those that are mediated uh, through the metabolism uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the organism of the, of the bird itself. It is very important to obtain uh, the knowledge and the techniques that would allow um, us as an industry to detect the risk of uh, onset of pathogen overgrowth in the early stages. And uh, this would allow us um, as poultry producers to stop uh, uh, from develop, development of, of these uh, problems in the early uh, ages, uh, stages. Existing alternatives uh, to conventional medications such as phytomolecule compounds are effective in prophylactic, prophylactic use um, to support intestinal um, health and the liquid products, as we have seen in some examples, can be used um, effectively and uh, they provide quite uh, some flexibility in the application and also in the reaction uh, time. So they can help in the period of, uh, of challenge. So with this, I would like to uh, conclude the main part of the presentation, and uh, it is a time for the question, uh, questions and, uh, and answers. Yeah. Let's have a look at the, at the questions. That I, we will, have. Uh, I will start, Anna, if it's okay. Yeah, thank you. Because I had time to look at them while you were presenting. <laughs> That's the advantage of being a panel. So one uh, question from Kim Badur Ale. Uh, how to maintain the good microbiome after treatment with some antibiotics. So I think there's, to answer this question, I would focus on two things. One is the actual application of antibiotics. And secondly, what can you do after stopping the application of antibiotics? Um, firstly, um, when it comes to the application of antibiotics, it is uh, recommendable to use a small spectrum antibiotic and of course, um, uh, preferably, or well, um, you need to have an antibiotic to which the target pathogen is sens sensitive. And by using a small spectrum, you will touch less of the uh, other mi microbiome um, bacteria. So there is less disequilibrium caused by your treatment. Now, an antibiotic treatment will create stress on the gut and um, it will create opportunities for bacteria to overgrow the, 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 the gut or create at least a disbalance. So there is a risk for a, a, a shorter lift or a longer lift uh, dysbacteriosis. And it is now um, uh, recommendable to uh, apply any intervention that can help to, um, to limit this period of disequilibrium. That means um, limit the negative impact that overgrowth of certain bacteria might have. Let's think about one example being Clostridium and using products that can stop the um, bacteria to become pathogenic. 
like in the example of Allah, but uh, there's also other um, uh, easily, readily applicable products that you can imagine to use at that point of time, directly following antibiotic treatment in the drinking water. Uh, also avoid the changes, avoid to add additional stress on the animal, like avoid having a feed change just at, right at the same moment that you are treating with antibiotics or just directly after that moment and avoiding other, any other stress like movement of animals, etc. So it's like uh, um, taking care of the animal by reducing the stress and by and, 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 and trying to calm down the potentially pathogenic bacteria that are causing um, this bacteriosis situation. You want to take one, Ala, or address? Yeah, John. So I'm, uh, I'm taking one question from Premavali Kannan, and uh, he's asking about among the different toolkits uh, Allah has mentioned, which is of more beneficial in maintaining gut health of broiler birds. So now, as a whole world is looking into banning on antibiotic growth promoters or minimizing the antibiotic growth promoters. Uh, we are also looking into uh, different options available, which can support into the gut health management, uh, which is also start right from uh, the feed uh, maintain, um, uh, health management, as well as how we can optimize the gut health uh, in different uh, situations by maintaining the optimum immunity. And in this, uh, uh, a toolkit of, it, there cannot be a silver bullet, but we can have a, a package of solutions which can combine together with uh, phytogenics, uh, which supports on uh, digestive functions, as well as uh, having strong uh, antioxidant activity, which helps into a good oxid oxidative status in the gut. And uh, uh, with uh, the antimicrobial properties, it can uh, support the gut health. So uh, along with the probiotics and phytogenics uh, can be a good tool uh, to maintain the intestinal health uh, when we are looking for uh, the options uh, without using antibiotics in gut health management. Thank you, Dwan and Ruchirai. Maybe I will uh, uh, take the question from uh, Satyam Sharma. Thank you very much for, uh, for, for the question. For gram-positive bacteria especially, what is the recommended strategy of uh, prevention other than antibiotics? As for gram-negative ones, uh, acidifiers and pathogenic additives have shown pro uh, promising results, but uh, that doesn't hold true in case of uh, Clostridia. So in, um, actually, we, we have a, a quite a positive uh, uh, experience with uh, using phytogenic uh, uh, products uh, against uh, uh, Clostridia. And uh, it was one, one of the examples that uh, uh, I, uh, I mentioned in, uh, in one of the slides. Uh, so uh, phytogenic products can be used and of course it, it depends on what type of products and, and the formulation and, and components can be can be different so please uh, also pay attention uh, to uh, uh, yeah to, 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 to the data presented and uh, uh, ask for the for the detailed studies uh, on uh, um, what what type of uh, uh, bacteria uh, the, the product is uh, uh, active against um, some products are effective for both gram negative and gram uh, positive and uh, uh, the, 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 the product was presented in, in, in this presentation uh, um, it, it had uh, uh, quite a good uh, uh, results against uh, uh, meat, or it, it showed good mit mitigating uh, uh, activities in the situation where there was a necrotic enteritis challenge that was uh, caused uh, uh, with uh, um, however, uh, so we, that uh, example described already the situation where the problem is uh, acutely present. And uh, um, the recommendation would be, of course, try to avoid the situation when it's already in uh, uh, the, the problem is in the clinical uh, uh, condition. And uh, uh, there are several factors that can lead to the overgrowth of uh, uh, Clostridia. 
um, especially the ones that we don't don't want. And uh, uh, it, it is recommended to uh, try to manage the diet in a such a way that uh, there is no excess of uh, 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 fermentable protein, uh, as an example. And uh, uh, also uh, avoid uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, to uh, help the, the birds under the uh, stress. So it's, it's a combination of environmental conditions, uh, also dietary conditions, and uh, some of the uh, strategies that you, you combine together with the, uh, with the product. And one of those products can be also a ketogenic product. Um, I must say that uh, this has been quite a good uh, discussion. We are uh, very thankful for, um, for the questions that you have sent to us. Um, we are approaching uh, uh, towards the end of, uh, uh, of the uh, session. So perhaps, uh, I don't know, Tuan or, or for Ruchirai, if, if you have a preferred question, we can uh, address it yeah. now or in, uh, uh, if, 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 so for one, one question? Yeah, I, can, uh, I would like to do one here, that, which is an interesting question. Um, okay. It is about... Um, so, one question. Yeah, and I will answer it shortly. It's about a novo route of administration of probiotics, if it is effective. Any research done in this regard? So, you know, I, there has research been done. I've, I've been exposed to some of that research through conferences and, um, and, and, and scientific literature. And um, that is, um, uh, sorry, um, and that is, uh, that is an interesting route of application, obviously, because um, so although at this point, I'm not aware of any um, wide scale commercial application of such uh, uh, of such product. I do believe it is a very interest. It's an interesting area to, to um, because obviously uh, early exposure to probiotics. We know this from human research can um, um, can lead to a long lasting colonization where most probiotics have the, uh, the um, let's say, the disadvantage that you have to apply them continuously to um, to main to maintain to have these actual bacterial strains present in the gut. So their effect is only, in other words, is only there as long as you supply them. This is theoretically different for a very very early onset application of of probiotics, as they might become early colonizer and become yeah a more long-term colonizer of the gut I will, I will stop here thank you very much Tuan. um since we are approaching uh, towards the end of, of of our time window i would like to remind uh, again that for, for those wishing to obtain the certificate uh, of uh, uh, attendance and and uh, the certificate from the academy uh, you would need to fill out the fill in the questionnaire and uh, you have the uh, time of five to ten days to to complete it and send uh, uh, back to us uh, to pass you need 69 uh, percent of correct answers and uh, um, yeah on this note we would like to uh, to thank you for your time and for questions and for the for the uh, attention paid uh, during uh, this session there are of course uh, uh, some unanswered questions which we didn't have to uh, didn't have time to cover uh, in case if, if if you would like to get the answers we would like to ask you to uh, to send them uh, to the uh, email address which is shown on the screen and uh, then our uh, uh, marketing team will uh, uh, contact us and uh, we will uh, uh, reply to uh, to your question um, as mentioned earlier, this uh, webinar is recorded. In case if you would like to, uh, uh, to revisit it again, it will be uh, available on the website and the link will be shared uh, following this uh, session. And you can also join us in next sessions, which uh, you can uh, find on the EW Nutrition uh, website. Don't forget about the questionnaire. Uh, I think it will be coming right away. And uh, again, thank you very much for, for the attendance. Uh, stay safe and uh, bye for now.